The amount of video games that are taking over my life right now. Wow. There's the Resident Evil 2 remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, and now there's Subnautica Below Zero. Like, there's literally no time to read. That's it, folks. This is my last video. There's literally no other way. Unhaul it all. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Holly and in today's video we are going to be looking back at how my bookshelves have changed throughout the years. An evolution of my shrine, so to speak. I kind of feel like a mom right now looking back at pictures of my children when they were younger. Cute, but eh, a little disappointed. Also, don't forget to stay tuned until the end of this video because I will be unboxing the January Beacon Book Box. And this one is extra special because it's going to contain two books and one of them will be an arc from April and we need to find out what that book is together. I started collecting books in 2014 and I have taken at least one picture every single year of the madness and I haven't looked at these pictures since the day that I took them and some of these pictures Whew, God help us all. My tastes have grown so much and they have been so defined and chiseled like a I don't know a word that rhymes with chiseled. I really hate myself right now for going in that direction. I've really honed down on what kind of reader I am and what kind of books that I want to be reading. So for those of you who are new and kind of classify me as an adult fantasy reader, well, hello, you're going to be very confused in a moment. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and just put up the very first picture. Boom, this, <laughs> this, was taken February 2014 and it's like we're looking at a fetus right now. No books yet. None. Not even a bookshelf. I had this really ugly ass metal shelf right here in this spot and it held my Walking Dead Funkos which by the way were my very first Funkos that I ever bought and I thought it was picture worthy for some reason. And I have an Ubisoft poster in the background, um, I think of Watch Dogs 2. I think I pre-ordered it and it came with that poster. I don't have it anymore though. It's really funny though seeing this picture because 2014 really wasn't that long ago, but no books, no friends either. But now I have all of you. Oh my god, also my, the walls. My walls had this ugly polka dot pattern on them and I painted them white as you can see right here pure white thank goodness those polka dots are gone okay so let's move on to the next picture which I feel like will be much more dramatic so this is where the addiction began by the way I'm looking at the picture on my laptop if you're wondering so this was taken June 9th 2015 so well over a year later and I have my very first bookshelf, which was so freaking exciting. I use the Walmart bookshelves. They're cheap and they work great. But you see, you see this ugly metal shelf still lingers. But it's actually full of books. And if you notice, most of these books are not very well known to most standards. My collection actually grew from my local Dollar Tree and from library sales and indie authors contacting me to review their books. Oh, and also Goodreads giveaways too. I see a few on these shelves from giveaways on Goodreads. I totally forgot about that. There was a time when I would literally enter every single Goodreads giveaway and I won so many books that way. I'd say at least a hundred because back then the Goodreads giveaway section wasn't really that well known. There would literally only be a few hundred people that would enter but um, today there's thousands and thousands of people who enter those giveaways so I don't do it anymore. And plus you have to add the book to your Goodreads shelf and I hate that. I only add books to my want to read if I own the book. So yeah, it was pretty easy to win books. Um, they definitely filled up my shelves pretty good. Oh my god, you can see my mass market paperbacks of the Broken Empire trilogy by Mark Lawrence. Um, yeah, I don't own those anymore. Now I got the beautiful hardcovers over here. But yeah, I actually don't own like 90% of the books 
in the in this picture now um i did read and review a lot of them oh like all the books you see over on the white shelf are books from library sales Ugh, i don't know why i grabbed like every single book that i saw like i was really trying to grow my collection of books back then but um i have grown a brain since then all right so let's go ahead and move on to picture number three. Oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> so this was taken August 2015, so just a couple months after the last one, and I'm pretty sure this is when I got rid of that metal bookshelf. As you can see, it's not there anymore. Um, I bought my second tall white shelf then, I think, and I was relocating all of my books, so I just stacked them up against the wall like that. But this is really funny because I remember taking this picture and posting it to Facebook and being like, look at all the books that I own. I'm such a reader. <laughs> but compared to what I have now, girl, you cute. I can't imagine doing all of that to my books now. I wonder how many books are right here. Roughly 149 books. That is so many accumulated in such a short amount of time. But I mean, <laughs> look at me now, baby. And now I'm spreading the addiction to you guys. Where's the help when you need it? Next picture. Ah, so this was two months later. This was taken on October 5th, 2015. And the aesthetics library has begun. What is that? Empty shelf space? I don't even know what that means. So I still have my indie shelf, which is actually right here at the time. I have a place for my plushies and more Walking Dead Funkos and Groot apparently. Uh, YA fantasy shelf in the middle, not there anymore. I actually really like how at the very top of the shelf, it's like descending in size and it's just really like pleasing to look at. I wish I had that shelf space again, but you know, that's like a distant future. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next picture. Um, this was taken on March 6, 2016. So we're in the next year. And things have changed a little bit. Okay, so a little bit is an underestimation. Um, look at the very top of my shelves. Look at those stacked books that are stacked sideways all the way to the very end holy crap i totally forgot that i did that and also look my plushies are descending in size oh holly that's adorable oh okay so if you look on the third shelf all the way to the right we're starting to get a contemporary shelf don't have that anymore um we'll, we'll see more of that in the next couple pictures but yeah, um, things are starting to get hectic here from 2014 no books to this. Also, wait, did my last, oh no, this is where my fairy lights came in. So in the last picture, I didn't have the lights around my bookshelves, but now I do. I still have them today. I love these fairy lights. Um, around Christmas time, I just buy them in bulk because they last about half a year and they're kind of hard to find if it's not Christmas, so I just buy like five of them. Okay, so next picture is June 7th, 2016, so just a couple months later, and it, we're getting a different angle here, and no, barely any open shelf space at all. Um, my contemporary shelf is booming, which is so weird to see. I really don't like YA Contemporary, and I had a shelf dedicated to it. It's mind-blowing. We have my Cassandra Clare shelf, which was right here behind me. Man, I, do I barely own any of these books anymore, which is just insanity. Okay, so let's go on to the next picture, and this picture quality is so much better now. This was taken June 9th, 2017, so exactly a year later almost. And wow. We are in full capacity here. So my contemporary shelf is color coordinated now. Good job, Holly. You're getting those aesthetics in for bookstagram. As pretty as that looks, which it really brightened up um, my room when I had like all the whites and the pinks and the blues together. Ooh, we have Harry Potter Funkos now on my Harry Potter shelf. So the shelf all the way to the left, the top one, where you see the Remnant Chronicles, the Girl of Fire and Thorns, the Grishaverse. I think that was my favorite shelf. <sighs> no Drabacrombie people. 
No Drew Abercrombie yet. I hadn't read Half a King. This saddens me that it took me so long to read him. Ooh, I also have candles on my shelf now. I don't know if you guys can see that. But um, they're on my Harry Potter box set. I'll like circle the image. But those actually aren't bookish candles. They're just like regular candles I got from Walmart just for the aesthetic. And they even go with the color scheme of the books. Yeah, I don't even think I knew bookish candles were a thing at that time, which is funny. Okay, so this next picture is going to be a major shift. This was taken on September 10th, 2018. So again, another year later, and we have some adult fantasy on my shelves. Um, I have some bookish pillows, I have bookish mugs, I have magnetic bookmarks. Did I have those? Nope, I did not have those in 2017. This is so weird to see, like, this, the transition, like, is how quickly it came at me. As you can see, um, Kings of the Wild is sticking out. We have half a king sticking out because obviously I read it in January of that year. But if you look on the bottom left, those books are just stacked. Oh, I hated that so much. It's kind of a goal for myself and for my bookshelves to not stack books horizontally like that anymore. It just bothers me so much. I want all of my books standing upright. The anxiety kind of looking at this is like, no. Like, a lot of these books don't excite me anymore and I don't even own a lot of them. Actually the books that are like actually on the shelves I own a lot of still. It's mostly the books that are on the top of the shelf and the ones probably hiding behind that the pillows that you see there I probably don't own anymore. But okay so literally September 10th that wasn't too too long ago. So <laughs> here is going to be a current picture of my bookshelves yay i feel so calm looking at my bookshelves now i don't feel like i'm being buried by books anymore it's just so funny seeing going from no books at all in 2014 to this and as you can tell i've found my tastes i found what i like and it feels so good to be able to look at a book and be like yeah i'm excited to read you and it just, it, it feels great to do by monthly book and hauls too. Just getting rid of a book. Mm. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and open up the January Beacon book box. I am now an official team member to the Beacon family and I'm so happy to be able to open up a box for them and for you guys every single month now. Um, it's going to be so fun. You can even use my code HOLLY5 to save 5% on your very first subscription. Now let's open this up. I forget the theme of it, but we'll find out in a second. Oh yeah, Spellbound Stories was the theme. And this, like I said before, this box has uh, two books in it. One of them being an arc for April. So we have little packaging noodles. So the first thing is this little jar of hot cocoa, Molly Weasley's homemade hot cocoa. Molly Weasley, smash or pass? Smash. Oh my God, that smells so good. Okay, don't, don't inhale the hot cocoa. Next, we have a candle that is from Novel Yours. It's from Caraval, I can tell you that. And it's gonna smell like sea mist and magic. You know what I think magic smells like? Blood. It's probably because of the amount of dark fantasies I have read, but I just think magic would have a really irony smell to it. So is this gonna smell like blood? It is red. No, it doesn't smell like blood. It smells very fresh, like like an ocean. I think that's obviously where the sea mist is coming from, but it smells really good. There is a close-up of the label. It's really pretty. All right, so I think the arc is next, and I still have no idea what it is, but it is... Ooh! A Pack of Blood and Lies by Olivia Wild, wild, Wildenstein. Wildenstein. Yeah. Whoa, wait a second. Okay, so this is a YA fantasy paranormal. It's the first book in a series and it involves werewolves. But it's so funny that her name is 
Wildenstein. Is that her real last name? Because that just matches the book so well. Hmm. That's really cool if it is. Oh, it's signed! I totally forgot they said it was going to be signed. So are both books signed? <gasps> Beacon Bookbox, you are outdoing yourselves. So here's the cover, here's the spine, and there's the back. It says, the primal rule of winning, don't fall in love with the contender. Ooh, forbidden romance, maybe. And it also came with a signed bookmark, too. Up next, we have these postcards which are really pretty. Here's the art on them. They're pretty much all the same thing. And then here's the back, so postcard, duh. And those postcards were designed by Little Berries. Up next, we have the book sleeve. And it's so pretty, look at that. It is like so fancy. It's just very elegant and I love the snowflakes on it. Perfect for winter. I should mention that they do a book sleeve in every single box. So they're still doing that and they will be doing that forever. Probably, maybe. So the book of the month is inside and it is, I have no idea what it is, but we'll see it together. Oh, it's Echo North, Echo North by Joanna Ruth Mayer. Ooh, it's so pretty and it matches the book sleeve. Look at that. So here it is and it is signed. It comes with a signed book plate as you can see. And here's the naked hardcover. So I actually don't know much about this book at all, but I will show you the spine and I'll show you the back as well. So cool. I don't know of any other book boxes that did this book, so that's super unique. But two signed books, like you killing it, Beacon. So we have one more item, and it's this. Is it a tapestry? Is it a tea towel? Is it a pillowcase? I think it's a tapestry. I gotta look at it first. Ooh, this is inspired by the Winner's Curse, and oh god, how am I gonna show you? I gotta stand. I'm gonna try to do this very slowly for you. That's what it looks like. It says, isn't that what stories do? Make real things fake and fake things real? Wait, what? <laughs> Did I say that right? That's so pretty though. I have so many tapestries and just the beacon is taken over. It's their evil plan. So that is it for this box. Again, use my code HOLLY5 on your very first subscription to save some money. I will leave the link to their website down below for you. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I upload videos every single week. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'm at hollyheartsbooks and on Twitter at hollyneese. And until we meet again, happy reading.